and welcome to Indus News. Live from Islamabad, I'm Naila Shuja and these are the headlines. U.S. President Joe Biden's administration has imposed its first new sanctions on Iran, targeting two interrogators for alleged abuse of prisoners. The sanctioned officers of Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps will be banned from visiting the United States. At a briefing, State Department spokesperson Ned Price said Washington is committed to proponing accountability for those responsible for human rights violations and abuses. The United Nations Security Council has failed to agree on a statement to condemn the coup in Myanmar. However, the council has called for restraint by the military and threatened to consider further measures. Meanwhile, the United States says it is repulsed by Myanmar's army's continued use of lethal force against its people. In Myanmar, security forces have launched a raid on the compound of striking rail workers. Nigerian special forces have killed 33 Boko Haram fighters in clashes in the country's northeastern Borno state. Nigerian media said two members of the armed forces have also been killed, while seven others are wounded. It said the army confiscated a significant amount of ammunition. Pakistan is set to start vaccinations of people over 60 years of age from today. The country has registered over 1,700 new cases and 43 deaths overnight, while the tally climbs to 13,300. Meanwhile, Brazil has reported nearly record 1,972 deaths in a single day as its fatalities cross 268,000. Globally, the virus has claimed more than 2.6 million lives and infected over 117 million people so far. For more news and details, stay tuned. We'll be right back after a short break. Welcome back. U.S. President Joe Biden's administration has imposed its first sanctions on Iran, targeting two interrogators for alleged abuse of prisoners. The sanctions officers of Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps will be banned from visiting the United States. State Department spokesperson said that the United States is committed to promoting accountability for human rights violators. At a briefing, Ned Price also said permanently barring Iran from obtaining a nuclear weapon is in the United States' interests. The move comes as the United States and Iran are at an impasse over efforts to return to a 2015 nuclear deal. Price also said stopping Iran from developing a nuclear weapon is in line with the U.S. interests, which it will pursue. The United Nations Security Council has failed to agree on a statement to condemn the coup in Myanmar. However, the council has called for restraint by the military and threatened to consider further measures. Diplomats said talks on the statement would likely continue after China, Russia, India and Vietnam suggested amendments to a British draft. Meanwhile, the United States says it is repulsed by Myanmar's army's continued use of lethal force against its people. State Department spokesperson Ned Price urged the military to exercise maximum restraint. In Myanmar, security forces have launched a raid on the compound of striking rail workers. The workers are observing a strike as part of the civil disobedience movement against the military rule. Some Myanmar police have fled to India after refusing orders to shoot at the protesters. According to New Delhi, around 100 people from Myanmar, mostly policemen, have crossed over into India so far since the protests began. Nigerian special forces have killed 33 Boko Haram fighters in clashes in the country's northeastern Borno state. Nigerian media said two members of the armed forces have also been killed, while seven others are wounded. 
It said the Army confiscated a significant amount of ammunition. It added forces also cleared an abandoned village where terrorists assembled to plan attacks. Over the past months, insurgents have targeted Nigerian soldiers in multiple ambushes. Boko Haram and its offshoot terrorist organization have killed thousands and displaced millions in northeastern Nigeria. The United Arab Emirates says U.S. sanctions on Damascus are making it more difficult to settle the Syrian conflict. The UAE's foreign minister, Sheikh Abdul bin Zayed Al Nahyan, held a press conference along with his Russian counterpart in Abu Dhabi. He called for the return of Syria to the Arab League after almost nine years of war. The foreign minister said the government and private sector could play a role in returning Syria to normal. Meanwhile, Sergei Lavrov said Russia supports a political settlement in Syria as well as in Libya and Yemen. Russia has invited Pakistan to a meeting on the Afghan peace process being held in Moscow on the 18th of March. Last month, Russia's presidential envoy for Afghanistan, Zemir Kabluv, visited Pakistan and discussed Moscow's plan to hold this meeting. Russian state media quoted Kabluv as saying that the United States, China and the Afghan parties have also been invited. Earlier, Islamabad announced its backing for Moscow's efforts for peace and reconciliation in Afghanistan. The planned meeting coincides with the renewed American push to accelerate the peace process. Earlier this week, U.S. envoy Zalmay Khalilzad met Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajba. Both sides stress to need the accelerate to progress towards the peace in Afghanistan. Turkey says it has neutralized 25 militants of the Kurdistan Workers' Party in northern Iraq. In an interview, Turkish Defense Minister Hulusi Akar said that the militants were targeted in an air operation in the Hakukurk and Kandil regions. Hulusi Akar said Ankara continues its struggle against all threats by PKK and ISIS. He said Turkey is determined to save its people from the scourge of terrorism. Ankara holds the fighter group responsible for the deaths of some 40,000 people in a 30-year terror campaign. Brazil has reported near a record of 1,972 deaths from COVID-19 in a day as its fatalities crossed 268,000. Globally, the virus has claimed more than 2.6 million lives and infected over 117 million people so far. The issues related to the coronavirus vaccine, such as inequitable distribution and politicization, are increasing by the day. People's Vaccine Alliance said rich nations are inoculating one person every second, while a majority of the poorest nations is yet to give even a single dose. Mexico is turning to China to fill a vaccine shortage a week after the United States ruled out sharing vaccines with the country in the short term. Meanwhile, the United States House of Representatives has cleared President Joe Biden's $1.9 trillion coronavirus relief bill for a final vote. The House voted 219 to 210 along party lines to advance the bill for a final vote. Commenting on changes to his relief program, Biden said the aid has reached smaller businesses, plus women-owned and minority-owned firms. With this new program, and we're going to continue this, by the way, it's not only, you can need only the businesses with fewer than 20 folks to apply in the last couple of weeks. But now we're going to keep the focus on it because a lot of minority-owned businesses, women-owned businesses, are increased significantly by 20, 50, 20 and 15 percent. In Europe, drug maker Johnson & Johnson has told the European Union that it is facing supply issues that may complicate the delivery of 55 million vaccine doses to the bloc. Meanwhile, British lawmakers say the United Kingdom's COVID-19 test and trace system has not yet proven its worth. The Parliament's Public Accounts Committee decreed the unimaginable cost of the program, saying there is little evidence of its overall effectiveness. Over in France, the number of COVID-19 patients in ICUs is at the highest level since the end of November. What is worrying is that the pressure and the limit being reached is mainly on the intensive care unit beds. There's still a bit of leeway, but ICU beds in our region and a few other regions, we are starting to reach the limits of saturation. 
this disease is still killing around 10,000 people every month in France. So this is a serious disease. The daily infections in Turkey rose to two-month highs more than a week after president announced an easing of measures. Palestinian Prime Minister Mohammed Shatea said hospitals are over full with ICUs operating at 100 percent capacity with coronavirus patients. Pakistan has begun the second phase of vaccination against coronavirus. Authorities say the vaccinations of people over 60 years of age is being started from today. The country has registered 43 deaths overnight, with the tally climbing to 13,300. The health ministry reported over 1,700 new cases since yesterday. It has confirmed over 595,000 cases in the country so far. Meanwhile, more than 565,000 people have recovered to date. However, the active cases remain around 16,000. The United Nations Human Rights Office says Swiss burqa ban is problematic, a form of human rights perspective and deeply regrettable. UN High Commissioner for Human Rights Ravina Shamdasani said this in a press briefing. Shamsadani said arguments in favor of such bans in the European countries question the free agency of women who can wear face coverings. She said vague justifications on the decision cannot be considered a legitimate reason for such an invasive restriction of fundamental freedoms. She said banning the burqa will further lead to women's marginalizations and exclusion from public life. On Sunday, Swiss lawmakers accepted a proposal to outlaw face coverings in public spaces. The United States says it is reviewing former President Donald Trump's designation of Cuba as a state sponsor of terrorism. However, the White House said a broader Cuba policy shift is not currently among President Joe Biden's top priorities. White House spokesperson Jen Paskey said a careful review of the Trump era's policies decisions is underway. Talking to reporters, Paskey reiterated Washington's commitment to making human rights a core pillar of U.S. policy. She added a guiding principle for Cuba policy will be support for democracy and human rights. The Trump administration returned Havana to the list of U.S. of state sponsors of terrorism nine days prior to its exit. Clashes between security forces and the participants of a march against police violence broke out in Greece's capital, Athens. The police said a cop has received serious head injuries, while two other officers were also hurt. Youths organized the protest after a video on social media showed police beating a man with batons. The police said more than 5,000 people marched through the residential area of Ni Simirini. The protesters threw firebombs and stones at the police who tried to repel them with water cannons and tear gas. The police said they detained 10 people on suspicion of taking part in the riots. Portugal's President Marcelo Rebelo de Souza has been sworn in for his second term as head of the state. The inauguration came with a message of hope after a year of the pandemic. At his swearing-in ceremony, de Souza pledged to defend, comply and enforce the constitution. Addressing the parliament, he said his mission will be to end fear and restore confidence in the people. De Souza expressed his desire for the next five years to be more a reason for hope than disappointment. It's now time for a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Buckingham Palace says the race issues raised by the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are concerning and taken very seriously. In a statement, the palace said recollections may vary, but the matters will be addressed privately. It said that the royal family is saddened to learn the full extent of how challenging the last few years have been for Harry and Meghan. It added that Prince Harry, his wife and their son will always be much loved family members. Meanwhile, British television host Piers Morgan has left ITV's show following thousands of complaints in a row over Meghan. The anchor has been a constant critic of the couple, drawing backlash from viewers and an investigation by media watchdogs. 
Russia and China have signed a memorandum of understanding to set up an international lunar research station. Moscow and Beijing will draw a roadmap to establish the International Scientific Lunar Station and cooperate closely on the project. Russia's space agency Roscosmos said under the deal they will develop a complex of experimental research facilities created on the surface or in the orbit of the moon. China's National Space Administration said the project was open to all interested countries and international partners. Earlier this week, China and France reaffirmed their commitment to working together in the field of space exploration. Art collectors and enthusiasts have trouble acquiring pieces from the famous street artist Banksy, but due to the efforts of a Munich-based curator, they can now enjoy the artist's work in one place. Little is known about the identity of Banksy, but even anonymously, he has earned worldwide acclaim for his witty, subversive street art. Spread throughout the country and sometimes removed by property owners or the state, Banksy's art is not always accessible. After extensive efforts, Oliver Foster has now gathered what he calls the most extensive collection of the artist's work. So we have around more than uh, 100 uh, artworks that, that involve installations, prints, um, sculpture, mapping. So the whole idea that we have it is just create a whole experience to you to understand the whole job of Banksy. So the most important thing is like you come over here and discover how Banksy developed all the speech around like the whole career that he had. It. Comprised of available prints and lovingly reproduced installations, Foster wants to allow as many people as possible to see Banksy's development as an artist. For viewers, there is a mix of world famous and the lesser known, including Girl with Balloon. This was originally painted as a mural on London's Waterloo Bridge. An original painting of the work shredded itself with a mechanism hidden in its frame moments after selling for more than $1.4 million in an auction in 2018. I really think like the whole message about Banksy is like you, we need to be more humans. This society right now is a very weird for me. So we are in the cutting edge moment. Like like humanity, we can see all the changes and all the bad things that we made it. And I think Banksy is the best way to reflect, make a reflection about this and thinking about it. The Munich exhibition runs until May 2nd under the usual coronavirus restrictions. Movies Nomadland and Rocks are leading the nominations of this year's British Academy of Film and Television Arts Awards. The recession drama and coming-of-age story each have seven nods. Virtual nominees with no audience, but BAFTA promises to offer two award shows this year. As the organizers say, they are determined to celebrate film. Details of how it will work are yet to be released, but there will be a show on Saturday night, as well as the announced date of the awards on Sunday, April 11th. As a huge change, more than half of the 24 nominees this year are actors of color. Last year, when BAFTA revealed an all-white acting contenders list, it sparked an online outcry with the hashtag BAFTA's so white trending on social media. The backlash led BAFTA to conduct a wide-ranging review, resulting in expanded membership. This year, there is a new long-list voting round and an increase in all four acting categories and Best Director to six nominees from five. So the long list, you know, by you know, its very nature, was quite a long list of names and the nominations were taken from that. But at every stage, it was about levelling the playing field not guaranteeing a nomination and that was really important to us that as i say it's people are getting through on merit because they are excellent films excellent performances as for those in the running leading the nominations are u.s recession drama nomadland and rocks nomadland about a community of van dwellers was also nominated for the best film and adapted screenplay the movie has had a successful start to the awards season earning two golden globes 
family drama The Father, Hollywood throwback, Mank, Me Too revenge movie Promising Young Women, and Korean language Minari are contenders at Britain's top movie honors. Four of the six Best Director nominees are women. This year's leading actors nominees include Riz Ahmed for his portrayal of a heavy metal drummer going deaf in The Sound of Metal. Others include Ardesh Gorov for The White Tiger and Tahar Rahim for The Mauritianen. As for the actresses, Buki Bakre is nominated for Rocks and Frances McDormand for Nomadland. The other contenders are Radha Blank for The 40-Year-Old Version, Vanessa Kirby for Pieces of a Woman, Wunmi Mosaku for His House, and Alfrey Woodard for Clemency. The BAFTAs will take place virtually from London's Royal Albert Hall. Stocks in the Asia-Pacific are trading mixed following a rally for major tech companies. Overnight, Wall Street's benchmark S&P 500 index gained 1.4 percent, led by gains for Apple, Amazon and others. Traders evaluated the biggest jump in the Nasdaq 100 since November as it surged 3.7 percent. Hong Kong's Hang Seng led with the gains of 1.7 percent. Mainland China's Shanghai and Tokyo's Nikkei 225 also advanced, while South Korea's Kospi retreated. Australia's ASX 200 gained marginally. It's now time to take a look at the weather around the world. For the latest news updates, you can follow us on our social media at indus.news.